In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily fix your WordPress website if an update breaks it. So you're prompted to update WordPress to the latest version, or maybe some plugins have updates available. You hit update, and most of the time these updates run without a hitch. Sometimes, just occasionally, something will go wrong. Maybe something broken on your site after the update, or even suddenly, no site at all. Just a blank white screen where your website used to be. Don't panic. I'm Dave Foy, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to troubleshoot and fix problems caused by WordPress and plugin updates. If you find this video helpful, hit the subscribe button and then the little notification bell below. Okay, let's get on with this. If you've got a problem caused by an update, well, the ideal thing to do is diagnose what's caused it and then fix it. But you might not have time for that right now. You just want to get your site back up and running quickly and then come back to it when you've got more time. If it's an emergency, just restore your site from the most recent backup. You do have automated backups running, don't you? Now, if your host takes backups, it's easiest just to log into your hosting control panel and hit restore. Job done. Or it might be you hit restore in your backup plugin instead. Now, if you're restoring from a backup plugin, what if you can't access the WordPress admin panel? Well, all decent backup plugins provide a way around this. For example, here's how to do this in Updraft Plus. And then later, when you have time, you can maybe copy your site over to a staging version if your hosting company has a staging feature and then run the updates there again safely so you can fix the problems without your live site being down in the meantime. But of course, just reverting to a recent backup is a quick emergency fix in a pinch. And at some point, You've got to figure out what's causing the problem you're seeing so that you can fix it. So let's now look at some detective work to narrow down what might be causing your problem. The vast majority of problems after updates are caused by plugins. A plugin might clash with something in the WordPress core, it might clash with your theme, it might clash with another plugin, or it might even just introduce a whole new problem all on its own. I am going to show you in a moment a really easy way of very quickly narrowing down the culprit. However, just quickly, just let me say that the usual way that you're advised to narrow down the problem is, well, deactivate all your plugins, then activate each plugin back again, one by one, check your site every time after you've activated each one to see if your issue has come back, and that is really time consuming, and, well, it's a total pain in the you know what. If you can't access your admin panel at all, then, well, you usually would have to access your server via FTP and rename your plugins folder and, well, all kinds of messing about. So what we have instead is a fantastic little plugin called Plugin Detective. Plugin Detective is very, very clever indeed. It uses a system of gradual deduction and process of elimination that I'm not smart enough to understand, but it very quickly narrows down the plugin causing the problem, and it is super friendly and easy to use as well. It works even if you have a white screen of death on the front end of your site, and even if you can't access your WordPress admin panel at all. It is amazing. Now, it is definitely best if you already have it installed on your site before you have a problem. So it's a great idea to just install it in your site now. But even if you don't have it installed at the time that you have an update issue, you can still install it at that point. If you can access your WordPress admin area, then just install Plugin Detective and activate it there as you would any other plugin and then run it. But if you can't even access the WordPress admin area at all, you can still install and use it. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details here, but there are instructions on the plugins page here for how to do that. The link to the plugin is below this video. Okay, let's see how to use it. To simulate a problem with a plugin, I've purposefully broken a line of code in the Elementor plugin. So imagine you've updated the Elementor plugin on the site and now, oops. Now we can't even access the admin panel to use Plugin Detective. If we could at least access the admin panel, we could just run Plugin Detective there. But we can't even access the admin area here at all, but it's all good. Because for these situations, Plugin Detective gives us a special URL that we can use. That's here on their plugin page. So I'm just going to copy that and then pop that into my browser. Note that we'll have to replace this bit that says yoursite.com with our own domain name. I've copied that to the clipboard. Let's come back across to our error page. So it's this bit here that's going to have to stay that's going to replace yoursite.com. Let's get rid of all of this here. Let's delete that. And I'll paste in Plugin Detective's URL. 
Remember again, we only need to use this special URL because we can't access our site's admin panel at all. If we could, we could just run Plugin Detective from there. But I'm gonna get rid of yoursite.com and that space. This is now the URL. I'll hit return on my keyboard and I've been prompted for our WordPress username and password. It's just your standard login password. And login. And now we have friendly detective auto bot on the case, which is great. So just click the button to open a new case and get started. It says, here's your site. So you navigate to where you're seeing the problem. Let me know when you're there. And for us, this is the page we're seeing the problem because we can't access the site at all. So I'll click, I'm there. Now we're being asked for key witnesses, which basically means which plugins are absolutely required for this site to work correctly. And you wanna tick as few of these as possible because in real life, all of these plugins could be potential culprits. Of course, in this case, we know I've actually broken Elementor on purpose, but in real life, that wouldn't be the case. But I'm gonna leave all of them unchecked. I'm done. So now our plugin detective is gonna interrogate 15 suspects. That means that all 15 plugins that we have installed. So click start interrogation. Now what it's essentially done here in the background is just deactivated all the plugins and it's showing us our site. But of course understand that this is actually the homepage content just without Elementor's design. So as far as we can see here, yes, it's fixed, meaning we're not seeing the error message anymore. So yeah, it's fixed. Now it's gonna interrogate roughly half the suspects to try and narrow it down really quickly. And the remaining eight are currently in the holding cell. So let's start interrogation. Here's your site again. Is the problem fixed? Well, as far as that we're not seeing the error message, yep, it's fixed. So when it interrogated roughly half of the suspects just now and the site was fine, Plugin Detective was able to clear all of those seven suspects in one sweep. So now it's time to split them up again. So now it's interrogating four of the suspects. So start interrogation. Ah, okay, back to our problem. So here's your site again. Is the problem fixed? No, it's broken. Now it's interrogating another four. Start interrogation. Is the problem fixed? Yep, yeah, it's fixed. So now it's super quickly narrowed it right down to code snippets or Elementor. Start interrogation. And now it's broken. So start the interrogation again. And yep, yeah, it's fixed. So now, super quickly, Plugin Detective has narrowed it right down to one suspect, Elementor. Start the interrogation, and yep, it's broken. Culprit found. Oh, you'll agree, that is so much quicker than deactivating all the plugins manually and then manually activating them again one by one. Elementor's surprisingly tall, actually, nearly six foot five. <laughs> okay, so how would you like to deal with this culprit? You can deactivate it here or you can leave it activated and sort out the problem on your own. Now with it activated, of course we can't even access our control panel at all, so we'll have it deactivated please. Okay, so now click return to WordPress dashboard. Excellent, so now we can log in, come to plugins, and all our plugins are now activated back again, apart from Elementor, so we know that Elementor has got a problem. So off screen now, I'm actually just gonna go back in, fix the code in the Elementor plugin, that I broke on purpose. All right, I fixed that code. Uh, let's activate Elementor again, fingers crossed. And there we go. Our site is back up and running. Let's have a look at the homepage. Excellent. Now do know also that if you do have a problem with an update and you can still access the WordPress admin panel, there are a couple of ways that you can run Plugin Detective. One of them is just to navigate to the page where you're seeing the issue and click troubleshoot. That will jump you straight into the Plugin Detective Interrogator. Or if we come back into the dashboard, you can either come into the Plugins menu and hit Troubleshoot Plugin Conflicts. Or a third option still, we to come to Tools and then Plugin Detective. So that is how to really quickly narrow down a rogue plugin causing problems on your site. We'll look at how to fix problems next. But before that, you might also, in some cases, suspect that your theme is the problem or at least you just want to rule the theme out in your process of elimination. One way to know for sure if your problem is caused by your theme is just temporarily activate the most recent default WordPress theme instead. And you do that in appearance and themes. And basically if you switch the activated theme and your problem goes away, well, you know that it's a problem with your usual theme somewhere. On the other hand, if you switch and the problem is still there, then you know it can't be an issue with your usual theme. 
One other tip for narrowing down problems, especially if you have a white screen of death, is to put your site in debug mode. Now this is a bit more advanced and you will need to know how to access your server either via FTP or via your hosting's file manager feature, which is part of cPanel if your host uses cPanel. I'll give you an overview of how to enable debug mode in a moment. When in debug mode, WordPress will display error messages on the page in the browser to try to at least give you a clue as to what's causing the problem. Now, honestly, these error messages are often gobbledygook and they don't make a lot of sense, but they do sometimes at least give you some clue as to the culprit. For example, once you've turned debug mode on, I'll explain how to do that in a moment, the error message in your browser might mention a plugin by name. So you can see here in this example that the plugin is my test plugin. Or it might be an error about running out of memory. So here's an example. It says fatal error. That sounds alarming. <laughs> Allowed memory size of however many bytes that is exhausted. That just means there's a process on your site that's tried to use a certain amount of memory and there just isn't enough available. And more on memory issues in a moment when we look at fixing the problems that you've found. Here's how to turn debug mode on. First, log into your server via FTP, if you know how to do that. You will have to check your own hosting's documentation on accessing your server with FTP. Or if you're with a host that has cPanel, then you can also use the file manager option in cPanel. But however you do it, once you're in your server, you would edit a file in there called wpconfig.php. That is just a file that's in the root of your WordPress site. You find this particular line, define wp debug false. All you need to do is change the word false to true. Save that file and then reload your white screen of death page on your site. And that'll then show you the error message. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, once you've fixed the error, you would edit the wp-config file again and switch the word true back to the word false and save the file. If you leave debug mode on when you don't need it, it can be a security risk because it gives naughty people out there clues as to the file paths on your server. And you don't want to be helping these people out, do you? So those are the ways to diagnose what's causing the problem. And once you know, how do you fix it? Well, it's really hard, if not impossible, for me to give you absolute concrete advice here because, well, the range of potential problems that you might be experiencing is pretty endless. But here are some common sense basics to try to at least get you moving again. One obvious thing to do is just deactivate the offending plugin. At least that way, you just take it out of the equation so it can't cause problems. It might be that you don't need the plugin anyway, but if you do, well, you might need to contact the plugin developer and ask for help. Either their support help desk or log a support ticket on their plugin page in the WordPress plugin repository. In any case, they'll hopefully be glad of the tip off so that they can fix the problem for others. Also check the plugin's change log for clues. That is just a list of all the recent changes. There might be something in there that gives you a clue as to what changed in the latest version. Do bear in mind that the plugin that seems to be the center of the problem might not actually be causing the problem. I know, mind blowing, right? Let me explain. For example, let's say you update Elementor and now a particular feature doesn't work. There is a possibility it might not actually be Elementor's fault, but instead a problem with the third party Elementor add-on. So if that add-on, if they haven't updated their code, to be compatible with the latest changes in Elementor itself, well then the problem might manifest itself while you're using Elementor, even though it's not Elementor's fault. Now I just mentioned this because I've had that at least once before. I mentioned earlier that a quick emergency fix is just to roll your entire site back to a recent backup. And that is a bit all or nothing. You can actually roll back individual plugins, individual themes, or even WordPress itself without rolling the entire site back. So if a plugin update or a theme update, for example, causes an issue and you need to roll back to a previous version, you can find the plugins page or the themes page in the WordPress repository. You just click advanced view on the right and then scroll to the bottom of the page. And you'll see an option there to download previous versions. And then once you've downloaded the zip file for the previous version, you upload it in plugins, add new. Or if it's a theme, you do that in appearance, themes, and add new in there and activate it. But actually, easier than that, just install another plugin called WP Rollback. WP Rollback does exactly the same thing as the manually finding and uploading the previous version, like I've just mentioned, 
except it just gives you a nice interface to do so right there in WordPress. And you can install this plugin after you've experienced a problem. It doesn't have to have been installed already. Here comes another safety announcement. Please be very careful when rolling back individual plugins or your theme to a previous version. Sometimes during an update, a plugin or theme might add new things to the WordPress database. And then when you install the old version again, you roll back while well, it gets confused and messes things up and breaks things further. Now, it's not always the case. I've rolled back to previous versions of individual plugins before just fine. But please, please, please <laughs> make sure you have a manual backup ready to go whenever rolling back anything, be it WordPress, your theme, or individual plugins. WP Rollback handles reverting back to previous versions of themes or plugins, but you can also easily roll back to previous versions of WordPress itself, the WordPress core, with this plugin, WP Downgrade. And again, the exact same warning about having a recent solid backup applies. You have been warned. If you need to roll back to a previous version of Elementor itself, Elementor actually provides a way to do that directly. That is under Elementor and Tools, and then Version Control. And finally, if you get the out of memory error that I mentioned earlier, you'll need to increase the amount of memory allocated to PHP for your site. There are various methods for doing this, and how you actually do it does depend a bit on your host and their setup. It's best to just check your host support documentation. There is a great article all about it here, and I'll link to it below this video. One last thing that I haven't mentioned so far. One possible error is that you perform a plugin update, for example, and then this maintenance message sticks around on your site and outstays its welcome. If you've not seen this before, this is when your site has this message briefly unavailable for scheduled maintenance. Check back in a minute. And this is a message that visitors see briefly anyway during an update. Now it is so brief, you probably don't even notice. And what causes this message to stay there? Well, it's because an update doesn't complete for some reason. Maybe there was a server timeout because you're updating way too many things all at once. If you have a lot of updates ready, like months and months worth, it's actually best to update just a few at a time so that you're not gonna run into server timeout issues. Sometimes you might accidentally close the browser tab while the updates are in progress. I've done that loads of times by accident. To fix this, you have to remove a file from your server. WordPress temporarily creates a file called .maintenance. And that is in the root of your WordPress site on the server. It usually gets removed automatically as soon as the update is done. But in situations like this, you have to delete it yourself. Again, for speed here, I'm just gonna link below to an article which walks you through the steps. If you need any help with this, drop me a comment below and I will try to help you out. Now, if in the very, very rare chance removing the maintenance file still doesn't fix things, it might be that the update really did stop midstream and you need to recover your site. As I say, this is very, very rare. But in that case, well, it's best to then just recover the site from a recent backup. That's either via your hosting control panel or via your backup plugin. An update going wrong can feel a bit scary and cause some panic and stress. Although problems like this are far less likely to happen, you just keep on top of updates on a weekly basis. Usually though, it's a relatively easy fix. So pause, take a deep breath, and work through the steps that I've showed you in this video. Whatever the problem, it is never a complete disaster, especially if you have backups, and you do have backups, don't you? So over to you. Drop me a comment below to let me know if you have ever had any WordPress update horror stories. You know, is there anything from this video that'll help you if it happens in future? I'd love to know. Drop me a comment. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button below and also hit the little notification bell so you don't miss more videos from me to help you build websites more quickly and more profitably with WordPress and Elementor. And while you're at it, a thumbs up on this video will be appreciated too. I'll catch you soon.